on my video about sacred scripture, the Bible, the Joey Rems, I must say there's been a lot of discussion, which is good. I didn't expect it to be so overheated. And some people were thinking that maybe I was um, against that Bible and, and so on and so forth. And I'm just, you know, quite baffled really what's going on there. But look, uh, I think it's important that we have this discussion in the church. And, so, and what's vitally important is people to understand this channel and any Catholic channel has to lead people to Christ. We have to open the doors and show with our example that this God, this man made, this God who became man is so dear, so precious to us that we want to share this joy with other people. And so our comments and our life and our and our videos should be about the joyful experience of encountering Christ, that experience of encountering Christ on Emmaus. I mean, people were asking, what's the Bible that I, Robert Nugent, are use, is using? What's the Bible that I've used practically for 30 years? And it's this, it's this Bible here. Uh, it was printed in the 50s. And it's a, I'll just show you here at the page. It's my favorite Bible. It's the... Uh, it's Nuevo Testamento Trilingue, so it's a, it's a, it's just a simple Bible in three languages. So, uh, it has here, it has the the Greek, the Latin, and the Spanish, um, which I loved. I love this. It's a New Testament. I love this. I used practically used it every day. Um, it helped me learn Latin. So it had the Greek, the Latin, and the Spanish, a kinder, a kind of older version of Spanish, uh, let's somebody would say, and uh, and that's how I got to know sacred scriptures. I didn't get to know them in English. I didn't have a faith formation, an in-depth faith formation of the scriptures in English. Most Catholics in Ireland and most Catholics children in Ireland don't know the, the, the books of the Bible they would have a very, very, very minor sketch of what the Bible actually tells us. Uh, most children today in Catholic schools, and especially in secondary schools, know more about the colourful alphabet movement. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. That is simply true. The biggest own goal the Catholic Church has done in Ireland is actually not teaching the faith. It's quite, it's quite sad. But this is, this is the text that, you know, I use this is what I find is comfortable for me. My faith formation was in Spanish, mostly Italian and Spanish, kind of half and half. And so I read sacred scripture in Italian, Spanish, and Latin. Uh, I found very Latin very very hard, <laughs> and people will remember this. And do you, um, and how I learned Latin was by repetition because we had the Novus Ordo in Latin. You'd hear it. You'd hear it being repeated and repeated, the scriptures, the gospel, the readings being repeated in Latin. And that's simply how I learned Latin, by repetition. You hear people reading Latin, you're following the text that's written and you and you learn it that way. That's how I that's how I learned it. Um, so I love sacred scripture. I love sacred scripture. I love the Bible. I love the New Testament. I, I love that, you know, the encounter of Christ by those on Emmaus, one of my favorite passages. And that's the joy I want to give to others. So if I'm meeting a group of men today in Ireland, if you if you sit down with a group of men who have very little exposure to sacred scripture, who, you know, maybe have never encountered it that much, haven't had a Bible even, yeah, and a lot of people don't even have a Bible. And uh, you're going to read sacred scripture in a group of men. I'm not going to use the Dewey Rems style of English. Wilt thou thy, O oh yea, dost, and also because you know the translation should be into the vernacular, the spoken tongue of those that you're trying to evangelize. Nothing wrong if you're a group of intellectuals or a group of professors in university or something, and they don't. They don't mind that text. It's perfectly fine. Use it. But know your audience. And this is what I'm trying to say. I'm, I wasn't trying to give a clear, hard direction there. I'm just tell, I'm just trying to explain what the translation. 
And if you're going to translate the Bible, you would translate it into the vernacular. And the vernacular is the spoken tongue. You know, how people speak. What's the language of the of the population that you're speaking to? And try and person, try and, and make the message as easy as possible to understand. That's the only the, the only area w- that I was trying to expand on wasn't trying to divide the church um, I'm trying to evangelize I'm trying to give the joy of the gospel that I've experienced to other people uh, and for me you know I, 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 I quite like you know reading the New Testament in Latin it's not that I can read every Latin text but because I've read through the New Testament so many times in Latin repetition you it just sinks in and you can I, I, I would be comfortable reading that with a translation and you know and the, that's a sacred scripture that, that, that appeals to me that's why I like the traditional Latin mass because you know it's it's beautiful it's beautiful for me but I've also known I've also known people. I've also sent people to the traditional Latin Mass who've come away from it and didn't find anything, couldn't understand it, you know, were turned off. Nobody welcomed them. Nobody introduced them. You know, you have to be very careful <laughs> because you could doing sometimes you could be doing more harm than good to that person. You don't want to make the learning the faith difficult. You want to make learning the faith something that's that that they can follow forward with. And uh, and I do honestly think I do honestly think we just need to be, you know, work carefully in this area and not and, and understand who you're trying to to um, evangelize to, who you're trying to give this message to. I, I haven't had any uh, many mystical experiences in my life, like uh, locutions or or Christ or Our Lady coming to me and telling me stuff never really happened to me. What I have had is like vision. So you'd see a vision of something, vision of the New Jerusalem or a vision of the Gospels being passed on hand to hand over generations. So that's something that's that's come to me physically seeing a book being passed generation to generation. You know, the faith, the unchanging faith, the deposit of the faith being passed generation to generation. And it's something that we have to take seriously. This book, this uh, text is serious. It's incredibly serious that the Holy Spirit wants us to pass it on generation to generation. And this is the sad thing about the sacred scripture is we don't take it seriously. We don't take our faith seriously. It's been infantilized or it's been neglected. We can see this in seminary formation. You know, people that go through seminary and then come out the other end. And and, and what happens? It's It's become... It's become woke. It's become God knows what. And uh, and this is the challenge that we have in today's world in the church, that we have to take our faith seriously. So I just wanted to clarify this. People got very annoyed with my when I started talking about the Dewey Rems. I have nothing against it. Nothing against it. I'm just saying the text in that was the vernacular at a certain point during history. When it was translated, that was the vernacular. That's how people spoke. It was the spoken tongue. That language that's used in there, wilt thou art, so on, so forth, is not used today. I'm often in a prayer group and we're praying the rosary together and some will say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And others will say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. There's nothing wrong with that. That's I learned it one way and they're learning it another way. And maybe this this generation will understand it better. There's nothing wrong with in English in our spo- in the spoken tongue of English, you know, saying uh, you or the. That's how that's what they're comfortable with. That's what they'll say, you know. And we have to understand in our English speaking world. In our English speaking, be careful of our English speak. There's a whole world of Catholicism out there that's not just English. There's a whole world. Most Catholics in the Catholic Church don't read a Dewey Rems or an English Bible they'll read their translations and you know every country has their debates on translation on specific words into their specific language and so on and so forth and we seem to we, we shouldn't be too blinkered on this it's uh, as I said expand we need to expand we need to teach 
we need to in, you know educate people and, th and that's why i liked i like this bible this new testament because it had i'm just going to put it up here it had the the latin the greek and the spanish and it was the text that i i really loved this text i i uh, i learned so much latin greek and uh, and spanish on this text um you know it just became very familiar with me i used it for meditation every day um and i, I just you know i just kind of fell in love with latin and it made it more it made it a lot easier for me and and i had you know good footnotes and so forth and it was just you know a beautiful a beautiful text and so this is this is my bible this is the text that i use new testament text that i use to meditate on because this is the formation i had since i was 18 in the faith and it's carried me forward you know it was the seed that was planted um and and not it won't work for everyone and if i go to an audience that you know hasn't had much exposure to the faith and i hand them a version of english that's you know, very English, very 16th, 17th or 18th century, very, uh, maybe not Shakespearean, but more Charles Dickens. Because Charles Dickens can be sometimes, you know, a hard read in some area, in, so, in some circumstances. You don't want to make the exposure to the faith um, to owners them when you're starting out, you know, lead people, help them. What I'm saying is the, the most vital thing is that you experience the faith you live it with radical authenticity. You show the joy of the faith. That's kind of vital. I mean, <laughs> even if I was the only person left standing at this Catholic uh, in the world, it would still be a joy to know this faith, to know this Christ, to know that this person is leading me, who is the way, the truth, the life. That is joyful. That is what you want to give. Because so many people don't have joy in their lives. They don't know the joy of the faith. They're stuck in in a in a in a wheel going round and round without being able to exit it and christ gives us the joy the joy of the promise of heaven and this is what we need to give to people and when when people want to know more about christ you want to give them a gospel that is um uh, accessible for them i mean i was in a catholic school for what was it all oh, primary secondary school the only people that ever gave us a Bible were Protestants. Gideon, the Gideon Bible. Not a Catholic, not approved. I mean, the Gideon Bible is nearly ubiquitous everywhere. That wasn't done by Catholics, as far as I'm aware. And, uh, and we criticize, you know, we can criticize biblical translations and so on and so forth. Where are, where are we Catholics doing this? Are we going to keep closed in on some of our traditional circles and not know that the vast majority of baptized Catholics haven't experienced the joy of encountering Christ in the Eucharist, in in the Gospel, in the New Testament? You know, it's 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 a profound joy to dig into that mystery. Um, you know, I I must I've read the New Testament over and over and over again. You always get something new. You're always finding something new. It is profoundly beautiful and that's what the message i want to give to people um and i was just showing people the different translations and you know how we have to teach the faith and know our audience and sometimes the style of english or the translation can be cumbersome for some people and we want so you have to walk them through it so i'm not saying the Dewey Rems is a bad Bible. You shouldn't use it or so on and so forth. I'm just saying know your audience and, uh, and, 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 and pass the joy of the gospel to the person you're trying to, to bring into the church. Um, that is really important. I mean, I, I hate to be preaching to the converted or uh, here. I, I want you to go and pass the joy of the gospel to another person. You have one mission as a Catholic. You have one mission is to evangelize, is to give this joy to one person. And that person might be your child or your children. You'd be amazed the amount of traditional Catholics whose children are not Catholic. They don't practice the faith. They haven't found the joy of the gospel. For one reason or the other. It's quite interesting, you know. 
we, we have to show the joy of the gospel in our lives, be coherent and, you know, give it to our children, give it to those around us, give it to one person, pass, pass on as the vision I had of, you know, generation to generation passing on this text, which is full of joy. You have to pass that on. You know, when I die, one thing I say to my kids, these Bibles are precious, are sacred to me. Do not throw them out. Give them to my grandchildren. Pass on this message, this joy. You know, I think people have seen the statue behind me. Uh, when I bought that statue, I was told it was Our Lady of Joy. And you have Christ holding a dove, which is the hope. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I know it's it's uh, the, the Bethlehem community that carved it in, in France. Uh, and it's Our Lady of Lys. I'm nearly sure I looked it up later. But they call it Our Lady of Joy. So, you know, pass on the joy of the gospel. You know, that's important. Open up the scriptures to people. Open them up. Expand them. Because even whatever translation, there are things, you know, well... That people won't under, always understand at a first reading. Well, what's Christ saying about denarii or uh, some some words, disciple? Explain to me what's exactly that, you know. And so we have to start opening this up. Pass on the joy. <laughs> you know, this is this is this is really, really, really vital. This channel isn't here for, to make money for me. I don't need money. <laughs> I don't need a platform. I don't need an ego trip on YouTube. I need you to pass on the joy of the gospel because I know if I went before God when I die, Christ will ask me, oh, what did you do to pass on this joy that you knew? You encountered me there. What did you do with that? It's like it's like frightening for me to read this, the, the gospel. It, 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 you know, it's frightening for me because, you know, I see this text speaking to me. You don't put the light under a stone. You know, God gives us talents. Pass them on. That's what we're called to do. It's not happening in the church. You know, I, you know, what I wouldn't have given to be a priest. I'll tell you this, what I wouldn't have given. You know, I was in Knock and I saw the, the line of people going to confession. And, you know, it, it breaks my heart, sincerely breaks my heart, what it would, I wouldn't have given. But I knew Christ didn't call me to that precisely it was crystal clear i do not want you there christ didn't want that for me and, you know and and it's it's you know and you have to accept the will of god god calls you to something else and he's been very good to me but he's calling me to tell you to pass on the joy of the gospel don't listen to robert nugent you go and read any text of the gospel of the bible that's proved by catholic sources whatever text and pass it on firstly digest it into your life and pass on that faith to somebody close to you as much as you can that's that's the critical thing that we need to be doing um and, and people will wonder why are so many people going to the traditional movement because in traditional circles it's treated serious faith is serious and it is serious you know salvation is real and you can lose your soul you can be eternally lost uh, people will criticize me but i was reading the the new age valentine tomberg you know if you read this which is his epic book you know talking to a new age movement and he says you can be eternally lost imagine that i mean there's so many saints that have said this it's nothing new i think he realized how, how serious salvation is how serious uh, the way the truth and the life is everybody you know as he says himself uh, everybody that came before christ is a liar or a beggar Every, they all beg they all they all beg off the truths of, of christ because only christ is the way the truth and the life it's, it's only him it's only him and you have to you have to pass on that message you have to pass on that joy I mean that's my meditation so 
This is uh, Witch Bible Episode 2. And I'm asking people, especially traditional, you know, help us, educate us, show us, pre- you know, bring souls to Christ. Pass on this beautiful faith. Lead souls to the Eucharist, to the Mass. Uh, you know, the traditional movement does a lot of job because it shows the seriousness of this beautiful faith, the seriousness of salvation, the seriousness of the, of the cross. You know, the crucifixion wasn't a dance up the hill. This was serious. The sacrifice of the Mass is serious. And that's why it's important that the Church understands this. Because many people don't think this. Every, every, today everybody's going to heaven. You know, really? Is that what Christ said? In, in, in That everyone's, you know, we're all on the same boat. And we're all going the same direction. You know, do we need to convert our lives? Do we need to change our lives? Because this book is a, is a book of conversion. It's a book of change. It's a book of liberation. From this wheel that we call our, get ourselves caught in. Anyway, God bless. Sorry to go on a little bit. Um, people said in the comments maybe I should have prepared a little bit more sometimes it's good yes I'll I'll try and prepare some of these talks a little bit more but I suppose we're just, I'm just speaking to those you know it, it, there is a lot you might be frustrated but know that I'm giving this in a good spirit and a good heart it's not that I've uh, that I want to lead anyone astray people can leave your comments correct me but then educate us people want to leave a comment where's your youtube channel expand you're leaving a comment there put maybe expand it out with a video educate people you know i've said this but you come back to me with a reply educate us educate the church educate those around you show how much you love the the gospel you know and and um bring people to it bring people to christ let him be the way the truth and the life that guides us it's not about us it's about him God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.